Hello Twin Flames, this is Victoria and I'm here with your daily energy check. Welcome to my channel, whether you're new or you're coming back. And of course, welcome to the new week. This is the, the solstice week, very important one, especially as we already have quite a lot going on astronomically. Uh, this is like a cherry on top. <laughs> I'll be talking more about this uh, most likely in tomorrow's reading, but today uh, let's do a quick check-in to see what's going on with uh, each of the twin collectives. Uh, I will have have two tarot decks with me. I want to ask two questions. The first one is going to be what kind of progress are the twins making on their twin flame journey, mostly with their karmic paths, right? Karmic lessons. And uh, second one is going to be how the twins feeling what are they thinking about towards their counterpart at this time, right? Like a quick check of awareness, consciousness, and that sort of um, empathetic side of things. At the end, I'll post some messages from the angelic therapy deck, angel therapy deck, with some uh, words of advice for each of the twin collectives. And at the beginning, as you know, I always start with oracle cards, and today I decided to use the Spirit Junkie Oracle from Gabby Bernstein. So we'll get some um, inspirational affirmations for the day or maybe even for an entire week. Uh, some food for thought and certain, if you wish, even mantras to keep in mind, to repeat, to have somewhere in front of you, to remind you uh, what is important now and uh, you know, something from the deeper realms. <laughs> okay, let's get let's get a card for Divine Feminine first of all. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a nice weekend. And I know that my reading was published later in the day yesterday. That was not my intention. I actually made like special extra effort. To make sure that I do record it in advance but I didn't notice that it just took loads of time to upload and you know like sometimes for those who are creators you probably know that sometimes you kind of get stuck in that loop and it can take not only hours but days <laughs> if you're not paying attention if you're not consciously there uh, you know wherever you are uploading it so yeah, I accidentally kind of checked after I knew it was supposed to be published and I checked it was still uploading hours later. It's like, oh my God. Uh, so yeah, I took care of it, but that was already later in the day. So apologies for that, but it is a very good, useful reading I find. So uh, if you missed it, then please go back and watch it. It is a longer one, but it does have certain insights um, on what is going on, you know, on the macrocosm level and, of course, with each of the twin collectives. Okay, a card for Divine Feminine from the Spirit Junkie Oracle. This is the name of the book by Gabby Bernstein. She did that a few times when she was publishing a book. She also released an Oracle deck uh, in parallel. I haven't read this specific book, but I've heard that it's quite a good pairing between the book and the cards. So uh, if you haven't, then I highly recommend. So Divine Feminines, your card is all is well. Everything is working out for my highest good. Out of this situation, only good will come, will come. I am safe. And these are the words from Louise Hay, actually. She was a huge icon in terms of, in the field of psychosomatics. And in layman terms, it's a lot about the connection of our physical state um, and, you know, different uh, misalignments or ailments and whatever um, could be misalignments or um, distractions in our mind and spirit so she actually put together a large body of work uh, on how those are connected exactly i like i don't know if i have allergies that's like this kind of problems if i have 
um, arthritis it's this it's connected to this kind of uh, mental um, well, I don't want to say mental challenges because it sounds like it's like a you know an actual disease but uh, how it's connected to certain uh, tensions or unhealthy patterns or traumas uh, from the past and that's when I actually started thinking. The first time I started looking at her work was um, something like 2006. Um, my mentor in philosophy presented it, um, you know, told me about her and her work. And so I started looking at it and I realized that was my, like my main realization was actually not even the specifics of like the connections although that was good that was very good uh but the most important insight was that i realized that because i had a lot of my diseases and ailments i had from the time when i was born that it wasn't even that karma that i imposed on myself through certain sufferings through some certain painful experiences in this lifetime but it's the generational karma that I chose to take on and to help my ancestry line with it, not to perpetuate those problems going forward. And now, like many years later, even after that point, I can say that my health is definitely times and times better than when it was when I was a teenager or when I was a little kid. For with most people on earth, it's the other way around. So it is a pretty big accomplishment on its own. And I mean, like, seriously, like, times better. And a lot of it was, yes, I can tell, because I had, I started having more awareness between these connections and how I can work with them. Because it's good, like, whichever um, approach you take, some people choose uh, to approach uh, this kind of um, body, right? Like this concept from the healthy lifestyle side right like taking care of your body having healthy um routine of the day healthy like nutrition all of those things uh doing sports right and that impacts of course uh their mindset and their mental state in a positive way if they're doing something right or you can approach it more from working on your mindset and your mental state and then it will show uh, results in the body but the most um, fruitful way to do it is to be aware of both, to work with both in parallel and also to be aware how they're impacting each other. You're doing certain work and then you're seeing, noticing those details. That's the best part, the best way to do it. That's the most efficient way to do it. Let's put it that way. And especially because not always, it doesn't always work right away. Like a lot of these situations, let's call, it, let's call them that way, they are pretty complex in nature. So it's not like you're just gonna start doing it and it's gonna, you're gonna get healed immediately. No, you'll have your ups and downs in this process. And that's why it's very important to be more aware of what it's about and how it's working for you. Okay, divine masculines. I can forgive people quickly, release my resentment and set myself free. Yes, there is a lot of freedom in letting go of resentment and forgiving people, even if you feel like they've done something unforgivable. There's still a big culture around like unforgivable sins or deeds uh, overall in our global society. And um, what I would say to that, because I've been in that place um where you know if someone for example has abused me continuously for a very long time it doesn't seem like and with like specific events right it doesn't seem like it's something that can easily be forgiven right but it can it just it takes longer but it can be and it's not to say that it didn't matter or it didn't harm me or anything like that right but this is still important to process that and to be able to let go of it so that it doesn't linger in you because and i was just talking about this connection with ailments right because it will 
continue impacting like eating out on your energy and impacting your body in a negative way as well essentially impacting your life in a negative way so you're not really you know it's not serving anyone and if anything you don't deserve that right especially if you were um, in the position of a victim right you were violated in some shape or form right it it sounds even more sad that you will still have that lingering in you and you'll continue uh, attracting those kind of situations or, um, you know, your state of mind and body will worsen with time because you uh, hang on to it. Okay, uh, let's move on. So um, my main tarot deck is the Muse tarot today. And the first question of uh, I was going to ask was about the karmic lessons and the progress that the twins are making. So first, let's look at the progress that Divine Feminine is making. What is the progress, the recent progress? Or what is now being worked on that is showing progress? It is important for us to acknowledge. Okay, we have eight of voices and four voices. Yeah, all this overthinking, I was just talking about it actually. Right, and that's why the mantra we have here is all is well. Everything is happening to my highest good, right? That, that's the mantra that uh, helps you overcome overthinking, right? To deal with it. Um, yeah, so these cards are different in nature and you can see in this deck, it's even very different color schema. Um, but to me, it's, especially if we talk about the progress, to me, uh, the dynamic between the two is very important. It's how you switch, right? From the state of overthinking and um, experiencing a lot of this shadow around, right? Like struggling to get connected to source uh, to deal with it, right? And actually being at peace and, um, you know, being calm and steady in the moment right like she's taking this bath here i always see this card as self-care card and four voices just four of swords in the regular deck is of course about resting about taking time for yourself about that relaxation moment um so yeah so to me divine feminine is progressing is succeeding is upping up her skills their skills the gender how it resonates for you in uh being able to to go from like from this um from this energy of anxiety and panic from mm, the energy of guilt and shame right because eight of swords is something that you impose on yourself basically right going from there to the place of peace of calm and actually enjoying the now enjoying where you are seeing the colors, the light, the the hope. That's what I'm getting here. What about Divine Masculines? What are they succeeding with right now? Making progress. I think I saw... Oops. Okay, okay. I'll take this. A few cards here. We have a Muse of Emotions. This is King of Cups. We have Nine of Inspiration. And we have the Strength card nice yeah so <laughs> divine masculines are getting better and better in showing up with courage in different karmic situations where they can turn on the loving nature and the wise nature right and not just give in to the fear of not being compliant or um, not being seen as smart or not being seen as uh, powerful right like it's the courage in seeing your power in where you are in your authentic honest representation in the world right and that's the muse where you're so you so yourself that you start being muse for others just with your presence right it's a very powerful charismatic motion Okay, the second question is going to be about um, feelings towards each other. So let's see what are the Divine Feminine's 
feeling and thinking towards their DM right now. So a hermit card. And nine of wands. Okay, we just hermit this in reverse. Nine of wands is what we just saw on the masculine side. <laughs> so it's interesting that from DF perspective, there is a bit of that or they see actually they see the divine masculine as in in the energy of fear but they also recognize that they're in this um, um, self-sustaining mode where they are trying to figure things out for themselves and they don't necessarily know for sure if they are in the hermit mode or not what are they doing over there right like there's lack of communication and contact so it's like double guessing here but they can feel certain fears that are being driven away because it's a nine and again it's one of those cards where um it's something that we kind of create for ourselves or it's a self-fulfilling prophecy if you will right so it takes this very person to let go of the fear or to move past it and that's what they see dms are working on in their own right that's what they're feeling that DMs are doing. How are... So they don't get, on the one hand, they don't have communication, they don't have that solid connection, and that's a worry to them, but they want to believe and hope that it's because Divine Masculines are figuring things out in their own story. How are Divine Masculines feeling and thinking towards their divine feminine at this point. Oh, look at that. Judgment. Anything else? The chariot in reverse. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. So major arcanas, this is huge. So definitely divine masculine is a feeling that divine mm, timing is at play. Uh, or it is not at play, right? Like, like right now, there's a lot of that enlightenment energy, a lot of moments of truth or truth bombs, as I'm hearing it, that are happening. And they they see the, those new layers of truth about themselves, about the feminine, about the connection. And they believe that the feminine does as well. And so they also see that there is divine intervention in terms of um, kind of like pushing the twins to work on something in their own right but they can see that that's done by design so they can't really be upset or angry about it there's nobody to blame right this is a major arcanist this is not something that we created or we can change easily but the only the, the best way to deal with this is to observe, to experience, and to be grateful for the experiences that we're getting. Because even though we may see delay in progress, or I can feel DMs are kind of like getting a little antsy, it was like, oh, well, we could have been, we could be doing this and that by now, right? Or, um, you know, we could have figured that out, or something like that, right? Like, they expect that, you know, it feels like it's not that difficult and there should have been a lot more progress in the connection. But at the same time, they stop that anxiety for themselves because they realize that it's all divinely orchestrated. It's all about doing it at the perfect time. And if it's not happening yet, the chariot is in reverse. If that progress is not there, it is like that for a reason. There are more insights that need to be received on both hands in order for the twins to be able to come together in their most, in their highest uh, re realization, representation, and to be able to value this connection the way that it deserves. Okay, messages for, or a message for Divine Feminine from the Angel Therapy deck from the guides. You are profoundly clairvoyant. Trust what you see in your mind's eye as well as with your physical sight. 
where spiritual vision helps you with healing, teaching, and guidance. Somebody had to hear that today or remind themselves. What about Divine Masculines? What's the advice for Divine Masculines? Goddess. Mm. I don't think I get this card often. Express your Divine Feminine energy, embracing its magical intuition and nurturing qualities. Yes, and I feel like this card is actually uh, hinting at that as well, right? For Masculines to be in the Feminine energy for the moment to observe more, to receive more, rather than actively move forward. This is beautiful. Embrace your goddess, divine masculines. Not to mention that it'll help you connect to your, to your actual goddess, to your divine feminine um, on a deeper and more profound level. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I wish you the best day. I wish you a wonderful week. And I will be more. I will be back with more readings very very soon. The next one is going to be about the summer solstice. Bye everyone.